Hi guys, in this video we are going to learn about 7.75% Government of India Saving Bonds 2018. At the end of the video we are going to discuss some important MCQs based on this topic. So let's start by looking at the relevance of this topic with respect to NABAR and RBI examination. So for NABAR this topic can be asked in current economic and social issues and in RBI this topic can be asked under the FM portion under the subtopics primary and secondary markets and the current issues. So recently there was a headline that the government of India has announced the launch of 7.75% savings taxable bonds 2018 commencing from 10th of January 2018. So this was a very recent event and government of India just announced these bonds and also there was an update in the budget 2018 in which it was announced that there would be no TDS on the interest on these bonds up to rupees 10,000. So this topic becomes very important for us in the current scenario. So recently it was decided by the government of India that it will be issuing these 7.75% saving taxable bonds 2018 with effect from 10th of January 2018 and in this regard a notification was also issued on 3rd January 2018. Now these bonds would replace the 8% savings bond scheme. So this was the earlier scheme which was prevalent. It was also known as the RBI bonds scheme which would now be replaced by the 7.75% savings scheme. Now these bonds would be suitable for the conservative investors who want a short return and fixed return with complete safety of their principal account amount. So those investors who do not wish to take much risk can take benefit out of this scheme. Now let's learn about the features of this scheme. So let's first talk about the eligibility. Who all are eligible to buy these bonds? Now these bonds are open to investment by individuals and that can be even joint holdings and Hindu undivided families. So individual and HUS can invest in these bonds. An important thing to note here is that NRIs are not eligible for making investment in these bonds. So only resident Indians can buy these bonds. Now let us come to the issue and pricing part. Now they will be issued at par, not at discount, not at premium, but at par at rupees 100. The minimum amount would be rupees 1000 per bond. And as is the current trend, they will be issued in DMAT form. There will be no maximum limit for investment in these bonds. You can invest as much amount of money you wish to invest in these bonds, but you have to be careful as it involves a lock-in period of seven years. Your funds would be locked in for a period of seven years, which has been relaxed a bit for senior citizens. Now let us look at the maturity and the rate of interest of these bonds. Now the bonds will have a maturity of seven years and they will be carry interest of 7.75% per annum, which would be payable half yearly. So it is very important to note that the interest would be payable half yearly. And for the payment of interest, two options have been provided, cumulative and non-cumulative. Now cumulative as the name suggests means that your interest will go on accumulating and will be paid to you only at the time of maturity at the end of seven years. So you can exercise this option and in this option your investment would 1000 invest, rupees investment would return rupees 1703 at the end of seven years. And if you choose the non-cumulative option you will be paid interest on half yearly basis so you can get interest on regular basis in the non-cumulative option now let us look at the transferability part so an important thing to remember is that these bonds are not transferable so if mr a has bought these bonds he cannot transfer these to mr b he has to keep these bonds with himself only now if he wishes to sell these bonds in the stock market, he won't be able to do that also because they are not tradable in the secondary market. Also, you cannot keep these bonds as collateral to obtain loans from banking or non-banking financial institutions. So transferability of these bonds is very restricted. Now let us come to the taxability part. 
now interest on these bonds will be taxable so it is important to remember that you won't be given any tax exemption on the interest on these bonds however these bonds will be exempt from wealth tax so the only exemption is there from wealth tax and no exemption is there from the income tax now let us come to the budget 2018 update with respect to these bonds now in the budget it was announced that under the provisions of section 193 of the income tax act which provide for deduction of tax at source that is tds the tax will be deducted on the interest on these bonds at the time of making payments to residents so tds would be deducted on these bonds at the time of making payment of interest however no tds will be deducted if the amount of interest is less than or equal to 10000 rupees during a financial year and it will be effective from 1st of april 2018 so this is the amendment which took place with the budget of 2018 so the provisions of the income tax law have recently been amended to provide for the deduction of tds at the time of making payment of interest on these bonds so whenever you will be making payment of interest on these bonds 10% tds would be required to be deducted under the income tax laws however no tds would be deducted if the amount of interest is less than or equal to 10000 rupees during a financial year so if the interest is more than rupees 10000 say it is rupees 1 lakh in a financial year 10% that is rupees 10000 tds would be deducted and the recipient will only receive rupees 90000 interest this rupees 10000 will be available to that individual at the time of making payment of taxes as a credit now let us look at the mcqs based on this topic 7.75% savings taxable bond scheme will replace which of the following earlier schemes of the government of india 8% saving bond scheme 8.25% saving bond scheme 7.5% saving bond scheme 7.25% saving bond scheme so this we have covered the answer is option a who of the following is not eligible to invest in 7.75% savings taxable bond scheme resident individual resident hindu undivided families non -resident, resident indians or all are eligible so we have seen that nris are not eligible to make investment in these bonds which of the following is incorrect regarding pricing of 7.75% saving taxable bonds bonds will be issued at par minimum amount of investment required is 10000 bonds will have a lock in period of 7 years bonds will be issued only in demat form so here the wrong option is b as the minimum amount of investment required is less than 10000 If an investor opts for non-cumulative interest payout option under these 7.75% saving taxable bond scheme, interest will be payable half yearly, yearly at the maturity of the bond or none of the above. So we have seen that in non-cumulative interest payout option, interest is payable at regular intervals and in this scheme on half yearly basis. So the answer would be half yearly. which of the following is are correct regarding transferability of 7.75% saving taxable bonds the bonds are not transferable bonds are tradable in the secondary market bonds are eligible as collateral for obtaining loans from banking institutions all are correct so we have seen that only option number a is correct here bonds cannot be traded in secondary markets and they cannot be kept as collateral for loans which of the following is incorrect regarding taxability of 7.75% bonds interest on the bonds will be taxable under the income tax act the bonds will be exempt from wealth tax under the wealth tax act tds is required to be deducted in case payment of interest on bonds exceeding rupees 10000 or all are correct so this again we have covered in our notes so answer would be all are correct so these are the answers so guys this was all about 7.75% savings taxable bond scheme thank you